Hey, how's it going? It's Neil Parfit here. Welcome to video number seven, I think, of getting started with the ER301 sound computer. Uh, today I thought we'd go over just a different way to approach processing signals. And uh, I'll sort of show you as we go along what I'm up to. So first on uh, track number four, I'm just gonna create a basic tone. So I'm gonna insert a sine wave turn that up so you can hear it. My phone probably won't pick this up, but I just want to keep it low for a second so you can see the scope. Um, I want to add a little bit of harmonic content to this sound because so far it's just a fundamental sine wave. So one way to do that is to just truncate the wave. So if I insert a limiter, I can just crank the pregain until it literally just cuts off the waveform. So take a look. There we go. So now we have a like a pretty much a pure square wave. I'm just going to back off a little bit so it's not completely square. And now I'll just go back and turn up the pitch. Let's say something like that. Sure. And after this, I'm just going to add a filter. Just up the cue a little bit just before it starts to oscillate and I'm just gonna gently sweep this just so it has a little bit of movement so, something like that so if I want to do that I can just go into this voltage octave source and I'm not going to use anything external here I'm just gonna add another sine wave <laughs> but I'm gonna slow it down And I'm just going to back off in the level so it's not as drastic. Oops. There we go. I just want a little bit of movement just so it's not a static sound. Okay. So let's say this is our oscillator source. Um, traditionally, when we've been working on the 301, it's left to right and then it's just out to our interface and that's it. But what you can do is use these blocks together instead of independently. So I'm just going to take my audio output source or my audio output wiring. I'm going to go to track one. Oops. And what I'm going to do is take the output of number four and I'm just going to route it back into itself. So in this case, it, it could go to any one of these, but I'm just going to go to input number one. So now our oscillator on number four is feeding into number one if I assign it, or it's feeding into input one and I can freely assign it anywhere. In this case, it'll be track one. So what I can do in here is I'm going to insert a bunch of mixers. I'll just insert three. And the cool thing is now if I turn this up, I can assign this our oscillator sound. And the cool thing is each one of those mixers is an independent processing block. So they can have independent VCAs. They can have one could have a delay, one could have a distortion, one could be a pulse, one could be a continuous drone, all feeding off this track for uh, oscillator. So let's let's build something like that. I'm gonna take um, our in one. So there's our same oscillator sound. I'm going to insert a VCA and just up this. What I've done in advance is I have three pulses coming from a Pamela's workout in different divisions. So one's like a quarter note, one's an eighth note, and one's a sixteenth. So that should give us some neat variety of some VCAs. So our source trigger will be A1, and you can see the pulses on the scope here. And then after that, I'm going to add a ADSR. Let's do that. We should hear something. 
Okay. And just for fun, after that, I'm just gonna add another filter. Oops. If I change my mind, I can go to menu, I can go to remove, and then I can reinsert what I wanted. So I want the ladder filter. So this will be my sort of pulse, but I'm gonna up the Q so it sort of oscillates a little bit. So here's my first, whoops, my phone rang and cut off the video. So carrying on, so here is our first mixel channel, mixer channel, and we have our first sound source sort of being triggered every quarter note. So now I can actually mute this and let's go to mixer channel two and let's do something else with that exact same sound. So we'll go to the mixer, we'll go into it, and we'll set our input source to in one. So there's that sound again. Uh, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a quantizer to make it a little bit more gungy. There we go, that's kind of nasty. I'm gonna add a VCA after this. And This time I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna trigger it a little bit faster with our 16th note pulse, and I'll add an ADSR here. Let's do this and turn up the gain. It's kind of neat, and I want to thicken this up with a little bit of a delay. So I'll insert a delay after. And let's use a clocked delay, because we have one. And we have external pulses, so we can clock to them. So I'll go clock delay. Our clock source will be A2. That seems like a consistent pulse. And let's set the, the divisions to a triplet. No, oh, actually, that doesn't sound too good. Let's, uh, that might be a bit too messy. Yeah, you know what? I've decided, you know what? That delay doesn't work. I'll go to menu of that clock delay and I'll hit remove. So we'll keep it like that for now. I'm just going to pull back a little bit on the release. And I'm just going to keep pressing up till we're back out to our home base. I'm going to mute this one. And let's go to our third mixer. And let's use that same audio source again. So we'll go into the mixer. We'll assign it to input number one. And then... I'm going to insert one more VCA. Where is it? Turn up the gain. And we'll assign it um, our one other pulse we haven't used. It's, it's the eighth note. So we'll use that. And I'll insert an ADSR. And I think this one's slow enough that I can add a proper delay to it without freaking out. So let's add that clock delay. We'll set the trigger to the exact same pulse, which is A2. Right? And let's turn up the wet. There you go, that's a little bit interesting. I'm gonna, oops, go back in. I'm gonna add an EQ after this. And remember, this is only affecting this one sound, so let's do that. If I can find it, EQ, EQlizer. Up the highs a little bit. Turn down the basses a little bit. I like how you can actually hear it clicking. And you know what, I'm gonna add 
before the delay, I'm just going to add a filter. That's kind of neat. And now, if I unmute all these guys, I sort of created this three element patch, but it's using this single sound source. So the cool thing about this is, most of the time in all the videos so far, we've pretty much been working sequentially. It's just one block left to right. But if we combine the use of two different blocks, we're now working more in parallel processes. So if you have, you could have the same sound coming back on two different mixers, you could process them independently. Um, you could CV control them independently and with the end result coming out this output, which if you're feeling even more adventurous, you could take that, send that into block two and, you know, loop it or sample it, record it. Uh, it's really whatever you, whatever comes to mind. Not too sure how to word that. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm a little bit frazzled today, but hopefully this gives you some ideas of how to work some parallel processing into your use and operation of the 301. And for this example, my block four was an oscillator on the inside, but if you wanted to, I could actually remove this and instead, I could take the my input four coming from an external oscillator. So this this audio is actually coming from a qubit cord, and then being processed by all these different blocks. Anyway, hopefully that gives you some ideas on how to use the 301 in a different way. All right, I'm out of here. See you later. Bye.